We've been talking about Newton's method, which is this really effective algorithm for finding the real zeros of a function. And the idea was we start with a guess, and we use it to get a better guess, and we use that to get a better guess, and so on. It's this recursive formula. And the formula was, if we've got some guess x sub n, we can use it to get a new guess, x sub n plus 1, by taking that guess and subtracting off the value of the function at our guess x sub n, divided by the value of the derivative of the function at x sub n. And if we repeat this process, we get better and better approximations for that zero. But repeating the process is really tedious by hand. And since we've got this algorithm, we may as well harness a computer and throw the algorithm in there and have it do the tedious work for us. So I'm going to step over here, and I've got Maple running on my computer. But really, just about any mathematical software should have Newton's method built in. So what I want to do is I want to define my function f, and f is going to be the function that takes the variable x and sends it to x cubed plus 5 divided by x squared. Now that I've defined my function, I'm going to call Newton's method on it. So like I said, this is a built-in macro in, in Maple. <laughs> I'm calling Newton's method on f of x. I need to tell Maple what my initial guess is, where to start the algorithm. And we use negative 4. And then there's lots of different ways that Maple can show you the output of Newton's method. The first thing we're going to do is we are going to look at an output as an animation. Press Enter. I get this nice graph here. Let me rescale that for you. Hello guys, today we're going to learn about exponential function. I will show you, this is the form of the exponential function. In this form, you can see um, the a value, I mean constant a, is tell you um, either straight or swing factor. And the b is the exponential function. The b can be any, any number, but it had to be larger than zero, and it's not one. I have two functions here. Okay, this graph is show you the um, it depends on the x value, and this graph is also the the same form of fx equal to 2 raised to x, but you can see the 2 here. It tell you this graph going to be six up to unit. So our next class topic is going to be on proteins and protein structure. The topic of this video is amino acids, and amino acids are the building blocks of proteins. And to give it a little bit more of a fancy terminology, proteins are polymers of amino acids. And a polymer is a chain of repeating subunits. And we call those subunits monomers. And um, quite a few of the biological macromolecules that we're going to talk about in this class are actually polymers. So they're long chains of a repeating um, monomer or subunit that's linked together by a particular kind of bond. And remember that a carboxyl group is an acidic functional group, so it has a tendency to lose a proton or lose a hydrogen into solution. It loses this one right here. 
Uh, the amino group is a basic uh, functional group, so it has a tendency to pick up a hydrogen. And so sometimes you'll see that amino acid drawn a little bit differently. Sometimes you'll see it draw, drawn like this. And I'm just going to kind of draw this quickly. And with a plus there. And so the formula for constructing a confidence interval for a population proportion is p hat, so the sample proportion, plus or minus the z multiplier times the standard error, which is equal to the square root of p hat times 1 minus p hat divided by n. So we can start by computing the sample proportion. 15 out of 30 students said yes, they're currently living in Pennsylvania. So my sample proportion is 0 0.5. Can now plug this into the formula. So p hat is 0 0.5 plus or minus the z multiplier. You can get this from the z table or using software such as Minitab Express. The z multiplier is the z score that separates the middle 95% of the z distribution from the outer 5%. So the outer 5% is split between two tails. So there's 2.5% at the top and 2.5% at the bottom. This is one of the most common confidence levels. So I can tell you that the z score that separates the middle 95% from the outer 5% is plus and minus 1.960. So our z multiplier is 1.960. Now we can compute the standard error as 0 0.5 times 1 minus 0 0.5 divided by the sample size, which was 30.